There are lots of situations where a program would need to manipulate a bunch of similar items, and that would be really awkward to do if all we had were the language features we've learned so far. Uh, so if you think back to the student class, uh, you remember that it had a name and three test scores. And each test score required its own instance variable. So imagine how tedious it would be if instead of three test scores, a student had 20 test scores. Well, we'd end up having to have 20 different instance variables, uh, all of type int, and they all really represent the same kind of thing. Other methods like get average and really everything else that works with those instance variables at all would be affected too. It's just a big hassle to work with, and fortunately, uh, because we have arrays, we end up having a way to handle this situation a bit more gracefully than just having separate variables for each individual value we want to work with. An array is an ordered collection of similar items, and it's a way for us to group together uh, the similar, similar items into a single entity that we can refer to with a single name. The okay, first thing is that it is more than one thing. It's a collection of items that are all similar to one another, say a bunch of ints or a bunch of doubles or a bunch of student objects. We'll see in a second. They're ordered. They're in a numerical order. So there's a zeroth element, and there is a last element, a first and a last element. And finally, all the items in the array have to be similar. They all have to be one type of element. That's what we call the things in the array, the elements. They all have to be ints, or they all have to be doubles, or all strings, and so on. You can't mix and match the different items. We can make an array of anything, any primitive type, any reference type, anything. You can see in the examples here, we've got an array of test scores, of, so that's an array of integers. We've got an array of string objects. We've got an array of cares. Those are primitives. And each of these arrays happens to have a length of five. There are five elements in each array. We refer to the first element of this array test as test sub zero. That's how we read it, test sub zero. And we'll say that this zero is the index or the subscript of this element. Okay, test sub zero. Test sub one is 100. Name sub three is Tom. Grade sub one is C. And now notice, we index starting at zero. That's a really important language feature, something you definitely want to remember, because if you lose track of it and you end up trying to access something outside the bounds of an array, you're going to have a bad time. That's it for now. Just wanted to provide an intellectual justification of what arrays are and why they're important. And uh, in the upcoming lecture videos, we'll see how exactly we can start to use them, declare them, instantiate them, initialize them, loop through them, all that good stuff. So before you close up shop, uh, make sure you can you can explain in some reasonable way how arrays make life easier for us, uh, how we access one particular element in an array, and uh, identify what the things in an array are called, what, what's our general term for them, and uh, what do we call the position of something in an array. That's a little vocab for you.